If you haven't been to your local copy shop lately, you simply must. Technology has come so far over the last few years. These days, a high-end copy machine can produce prints with as many as 9600 by 600 dots per inch. Are we clear? Yes, sir. Are we clear? Crystal. With that sort of crystal clear quality and the ready availability of all manner of fancy papers, you might ask yourself, why don't I buy a ream of mint green stationery, shove a couple of sawbucks in the Xerox, and break real bad printing off sweet ducats? How much is this? I have no earthly idea. Amazingly enough, the government somehow recognized pretty early on that a machine capable of making exact replicas of two-dimensional surfaces might be a threat to the stability of a paper currency. That's why bills and notes around the world are outfitted with little understood, remarkably hush-hush watermarks and patterns designed to alert printers and digital image editors to the potential presence of fat stacks of cash. Exhibit A is the Orion constellation a distinctive five-point pattern incorporated into the face of most modern currency. It's pretty easy to spot in the tiny zeros on the back of a $20 bill and every variation of the euro, and can be found on cash from all over the world. When software built into photocopiers senses this pattern, the machine will deliberately trash the resulting copy, either by printing only a fraction of the image or by refusing to print at all. Additionally, most versions of programs like Adobe Photoshop will display an intimidating warning message if they detect currency in an image file. What makes this extra interesting is that, by design, we don't know all of the ways that software can thwart your attempts to slam out a couple of sheets of scratch. With new security measures being included all the time, it's unlikely that counterfeiters will be able to catch up, at least not the ones at Kinko's. There are plenty of other ways that currencies around the world have been redesigned to curb the desires of everyone's inner Rob Schneider, too. The Tomster making copies, Mr. Tom. The addition of a thin plastic strip to paper money has become common as has the use of holographic markings and abandoning paper money altogether in favor of polymer banknotes, which have been used in Australia and New Zealand since the 80s and 90s. But let's say you won't let any of this deter you. Boy, that's just a straight shooter with upper management written all over him. You're a go-getter, a dreamer, and in close proximity to the office photocopier. You've managed, hypothetically, to bypass the cryptic software used to keep you from hitting that print button, and now you've got yourself a billfold four inches thick with cash that, let's be honest, doesn't look particularly real, but to hell with it. Maybe the valet at Fuddruckers won't notice. Besides, what's the worst that could happen? Um, it's obviously a crime to pass counterfeit money. So glad you asked. In the good old U.S. of A, counterfeiting currency falls under U.S. Code Title 18, Section 471, which the folks at Cornell's Legal Information Institute will happily tell you states the following. Whoever, with intent to defraud, falsely makes, forges, counterfeits, or alters any obligation or other security of the United States, shall be fined under this title or imprisoned not more than 20 years or both. Up until the mid-90s, that fine was no more than $5,000, but the law was reworded in 1994. Now, shoving a Benjamin in the Xerox machine can mean that you owe the American government as much as $250,000. Of course, that's a slap on the wrist compared to the punishment in China, which includes a life sentence. Still, it doesn't seem to matter how harsh the consequences or even how advanced anti-counterfeiting measures become. Like Batman Commissioner James Gordon predicted, there's always going to be escalation. Per the BBC News, in December of 2019, a joint effort by Europol shut down a preposterously advanced ring of counterfeiters in Germany, Austria, France, Greece, Ireland, Luxembourg, and Spain, managing to retrieve over a million euros worth of fake bills. The gang had a setup so advanced that they were capable of producing their own holographic strips and chemical watermarks, selling through anonymous tour routing networks and were reported to be the Darknet's second largest counterfeit currency producer. Even with such a remarkable Carmen Sandiego-worthy series of facilities, they still got caught. The point here is you're probably not going to do a lot better with a Best Buy Rewards membership card and an HP inkjet, so honestly, you're a lot better off not trying. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more grunge videos about strange and interesting topics are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.